Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. Over here today working on the Hypertherm plasma cutter, trying to get it going. Uh, so far I've had to replace the air regulator on the back. It was missing the bowl as it turns out and the filter assembly. You can't buy them separate. You can only buy them as the whole cartridge unit. So it turns out I needed one of them anyway because when I tried to adjust the pressure up and down it wouldn't change. So I've replaced that. Got it fixed, got the air hoses all run on the back because they apparently had this run on the separate uh, gases for the shield and the plasma itself previously and they weren't even using that regulator. But uh, I'm running on compressed air so I've switched that all back and got the hoses on there. Then once I got that done, I had a uh, low pressure warning uh, but the pressures were good, so I come over here on this side with the panel off and go in there and take the uh, pressure switch apart and adjust the spring down on it to get it to turn on and off at the 70 pound pressure set point like it's supposed to. And I got that done and got all my warning lights turned out and then it still wouldn't strike an arc, base, I guess what you call it with the plasma and got the tracking down and the switch is no good in the handle which is probably why they finally quit using this thing they also had the flow uh, meter jumpered on the coolant but uh, i plugged it back up and it's working and i got the uh, you just have to hold the switch down on it to get it to come on so that's working so that was working and i was able to do a little bit of cutting gouging and just holding the wires together as best I could on the switch to make it work to check that everything else was working so ordered the switch up online and I've got it here so I'm going to show you how I put that back in the torch assembly and once I get that done I guess we'll be ready to fire this thing up again and see if it works we we'll to run some wire back over here again to it again to get it plugged up with but uh that's not a big deal. I just rob it off the Monarch and drag it over here and plug it in. So this is 480 volt three phase also, just like it was. So there it is. Let's take a look at this handle and see what we gotta do to replace this switch. I've already gotten the handle assembly taken apart. And this was the switch. And you can hear it click, but it doesn't do anything. I got the new switch here. This is part number That's not it, that's the one for this boot. Switch part number 005094. If you have one of these Max 200s, Max, this is a Pack 200 torch, I believe. So, that's the replacement. And we'll see if I can find some shrink connectors for that. Yep, I can switch in, taped up. Shouldn't come loose. I'll replace this junk on here, it annoys me. Heads off, only made a minor mess, so let's see if we can't get rid of this jump. Let's 
put on this jump. I'll let this mess dry out and I'll come back and try and do something about getting that covered up, protected, and make that a little cleaner. But otherwise, looks like I got it back together and the switch is clicking. So, this is time to hook some power up and see what this thing will do. Well, I think I got this hooked up to where it should work now, I'm hoping. If I got my trigger switch working like it should, so I'm going to fire up the phase converter and I got my wires run over here, this thing's hooked up, I got my new ground cable on and this thing should cut now, I hope. So I'm going to power it up and let's see what happens. Alright, so you can see my warning display saying my shield gas is low and the plasma gas is low and the coolant flows off. I don't have a coolant temp alarm, a coolant level problem, and the transformer and interlock's not a problem. Now let me turn the air on from the compressor, and one of those lights should go out. It looks 
like one did. So the next thing to do is to hit go and Yeah, cuts. Clearly, I need to work on my torque skills. Also, for this thickness, I have the wrong tips on here, so I need to change that out and see what kind of difference that makes. Uh, I got tips for great big thickness. I'm running lower amps for doing this thinner stuff, so. But it does cut, so that's more than I had as far as the plasma cutter goes. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing me get this plasma cutter up and going. Uh, it's definitely the best plasma cutter I got in the shop and the first one I've ever had. So it's definitely a learning curve as far as that goes. But it looks like I've got it at least working for the moment. It will cut so I can do what I could do with the torch before for the most part. All this does cut cast iron as you saw. Well, it's probably ductile iron on that brake rotor but uh, cut right through it which doesn't usually cut real good with a torch cast iron it's not the greatest but uh, plasma go right through it and steel cuts even better so it should be a handy shop addition i just need to get everything in here reorganized where i can get it to a more final position of where it's going to sit but uh, for now it's usable 
Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll catch y'all later.